Welcome back. All right, so we are doing the Lajitati of Ashtas of Venus. This is the last way that Venus can be delighted in the Mudita of Ashta. This is when Venus is delighted by Jupiter. And this can only happen when Venus is conjunct Jupiter in the sky. And this is any time Venus is in the same sign as Jupiter. Doesn't need to be within orb of aspect of conjunction. Um, and this happens because in the Avashtas, anytime any planet is conjunct Jupiter or in the same sign as Jupiter, it is delighted. It is in the Pramadita Vashta. And this makes sense because Jupiter is the planet of like virtue and goodness. His name is Guru. You know, like how Gurus always help everyone, you know, even if they aren't really helping them back. In the same way, Jupiter helps every other planet, even if it's his enemy. In this case, actually Venus is one of Jupiter's enemies. So, when you look at charts, this kind of a Vashti can really go a lot of different ways. From the standpoint of Jupiter, this is very bad. Um, Jupiter is going to be afflicted when he's with Venus. But from the standpoint of Venus, this is very good. Venus is being delighted by Jupiter and feeling grace. So, if you're ruled by Jupiter, or the things that are ruled by Jupiter can actually suffer with this placement, but the things, if you're ruled by Venus, or the things are representative of Venus, or what houses its ruling, will tend to do really well in this. And in the dashes of Jupiter, this uh, Jupiter will suffer from Venus, and I will have to wait till I go into Jupiter's avashtas um, to explain all of that and why that is. But in general, you can get an idea of this because Jupiter is like, what does he represent? Happiness? Dharma, like your inner fulfillment, and Venus represents all the things in the world that can make life more bearable and more fulfilling externally. And so it's like a person is getting their sense of fulfillment all mixed up by external things and internal things, and they're all mixed up in that regard. And so essentially what happens is that one can get a little bit confused and think that they need to find happiness outside of them essentially and that ruins Jupiter's ability to find happiness. One of the best pieces of advice I've ever heard was happiness is an inside job. And you know I, I was taught that by a person with an exalted Jupiter you know so go figure. Now we will talk more about this Avashta from Venus's perspective. We'll wait till we go into talking about the Jupiter Avashtas more to talk about that. But from Venus standpoint, this is one way Venus will be rejoicing or mudita. Okay, and this in this particular one, it's a little different from the Saturn one that I mentioned, like when Venus is in Capricorn or you know the Venus Mercury conjunction. This one. Um, It's kind of like their their dharma itself, you know, Jupiter can represent your dharma itself. So their dharma itself is more worldly with Venus there. So this can be good for someone who wants that. And so they can have a lot more just luck with worldly success and with worldly things. And things in the world bring them more happiness and more fulfillment than the average person. Um, they can make wiser choices they can uh, make choices that are, yeah, they can just be like a wiser decision maker, not not really like as impulsive and not make things that are kind of, well, it's like Venus is that Rajas Guna, you know, and, and it has to do with our decision making capacity. So Venus delighting Jupiter helps someone to make a decision that will make, that will actually make them happier. Um, not based on a more transient desire that's passing, which is like what happens when the moon starves Venus. Um, and they also like tend to be a lot more inclined to help other people find happiness, you know, because Venus is how you relate to others and Jupiter's are delighting it. So they're like really easy to get along with. They like socializing. They're, they're very social people usually. And they just enjoy like being in the world and having like interchange with the world and in, like uh, interactions and sharing things with the world. This is all Venus. And so they just, you know, they, they can talk to people very easily. Like even if they're a grumpy person because of other things in their chart, they can, you know, when they just turn on, they can just start talking to anyone about anything. That sort of, that sort of person. Um, and you like, they want to help others more. They want to help others find happiness more. Um, 
like whatever house that's in like that thing in life usually delights them a lot so if it's in like the um the ninth house they're really just delighted by their guru they love their teachers they love religion they love the culture they're born into if it's in the fifth house they just love their children and they just you know their children are what bring them so much joy um it's like an external thing though you know that's making them happy and that's all good but it's just when we come to jupiter's standpoint at the end of the day like you're really not supposed to find happiness from anything outside of you. You know what I mean? Happiness is just going to, it's supposed to be part of your essence of being, really. Um, and that comes down to if you have a good Jupiter or not. Or, you know, what, what you're doing with that. Um, so it's kind of like they'll get more luxury in life. They'll get more, like, you know, more boyfriends or girlfriends or more nice cars, more nice money, all these things, um, get to travel, get to take vacations, but they don't necessarily always find fulfillment very easily or like fulfillment from those things. And, you know, Jupiter is happiness, but Venus is Raja, Skuna. So it's like this thing always stimulating, always kind of being restless and always kind of like getting in the way or starving your fulfillment your or your total happiness, which is Jupiter. And so that's sort of the, the trouble here and that's why I can't I can't really say that this is a universally great placement and that's what's fascinating is because Western astrology is like this is one of the best placements there is end of the day like who cares no matter what you have this placement it's just the best there is um, that's what I was taught and that's what I learned when I was studying Western astrology and so I remember like meeting girls and people who had this when I was only like 19 or 20 and be like oh interesting and now I've seen their lives and now I'm 31 and seen what's happened in their lives and it's like, wow, the Vedic angle really explains it quite truly. And a lot of those people who have that have, sure, they've had lots of fun, fast, fun life, nice cars, luxuries, but now they're really less happy than anyone, you know what I mean? They're tremendously less fulfilled, they're tremendously less happy, they're, you can tell they're they're just wondering. They're like, what? Why? I've done all. They're like, I've done more than all these other people have done, and I'm still not feeling good at all. You know what I mean? Um, so it's really interesting. They're still trying to find fulfillment, I guess, at the end of the day. Um, and so it's like more of the things that make us happy in the world will show up to you, and you'll think that's what you need. Um, and only if you really are that Venus person, that's your dharma in this life, to just be able to enjoy that because maybe you had a lot of suffering in a past life and so you've come with this placement, you know, the gods have blessed you, you've done something really good in a past life, so you're like meant to have all these nice luxuries and all these nice Venusian things, then that's good. But um, in a lot of other situations, this, this placement's actually not that great, you know? And it's kind of like, when you think about these Avastas, you know, Saturn is kind of like your negative fate that we all talk about in all systems of astrology and Jupiter is like the positive auspicious fate that you experience and so when it's when you look at a chart that has Venus and Saturn conjunct it's delighted but also starved by Saturn like I talked about in a previous video well that's like that means it's okay it's it's your turn amongst your many lives to kind of have to face the more challenging Venus karmas you've avoided you know what I mean or, or what is caught up to you and then when you get to the life where you have Venus and Jupiter conjunct then that's sort of the life where you're being rewarded you know what I mean for good choices or choices you made in the past that helped others or something of that sort um, so yeah this is kind of a really weird placement um, I know a lot of people who've had this, you know, they're, they, they get lots of clothing, lots of things, lots of collectibles, lots of money, cars, girlfriend, whatever, but it's like still at the end of the day, you can see that it's not necessarily always really making them any happier. They just want more of it a lot of times. Um, but then occasionally there is someone who, um, who is going to be a little bit more who that's just what they're meant to do and so they feel fulfilled from that but still uh, the person that represents Jupiter in their life might still suffer as a result so it's kind of interesting um, they sort of get a lot more fulfillment from the things the secular the things of this world politics things like that even they see they get that they feel fulfilled for these worldly situations and structures but they get no fulfill, fulfillment kind of from um, from like the Jupiter things, like your like your big picture, your philosophy. So they end up 
maybe not being very spiritual or not being very philosophical sometimes or being atheists or, you know, I know a number of people who have this placement who are very staunch atheists um, and are very miserable people. You know what I mean? Um, they were very happier earlier in their life and as they're getting older, they're getting more and more miserable. You can kind of just tell. And they just think that's what everyone deals with. Um, <laughs> but it's not. Um, but uh, yeah, this sort of, this placement, we could say it really ties together one's dharma and one's sense, one's worldly happiness and worldly accomp accomplishments and comforts and luxury. And so they can find a lot more fulfillment in the material world. But it's just that that's, from the Vedic standpoint, that's a slippery slope. You know what I mean? And so that's why that can't be considered a universally good placement. But it's fascinating how Western astrology doesn't have that whole Vedic um, structure, and any of these avashas are completely forgotten, and um, as a result, there's no, uh, they don't have this understanding, and um, that seems almost fitting for Western culture, though, because we're not <laughs> as interested in Dharma, <laughs> it seems. Anyways, that's my own personal thoughts. I'll let that go. Thanks, you guys. Take care. Um, this this is all the delight. That we that Venus can experience. So now there's just a couple more I want to cover while Venus is retrograding. Um, the lajita, the shame of Venus, and then the agitation. I think that's it. Okay, take care, you guys. Bye.